when you do stem cell transplant, you expect to stop the autoimmune disease, right? That is what we expect and then we hope for improvement. Being a non-responder after HSCT is very different for everyone because it depends on the degree of your disability before you underwent the procedure, how old you are, how aggressive your MS is, and of course, for how long time you have had MS. I am one of the moderators in the Facebook group, non-responder support group. And I know that a lot of people want to join us in that group, but we try to have quite rigid boundaries because we want this group to be a safe place for the people who are really non-responders, where we can exchange our experiences, what is working, support each other, give comfort. I can understand that all of you that are researching into HSCT to see if this is a treatment for you, you want to know the full spectrum, both the optimistic and the devastating results. Because none of us really knows in what category we end up. But I just want to tell you that the negative experiences, they are available. A lot of us are sharing our story in posts, in Facebook groups, in blogs, in videos on YouTube. But you need to search for it. You need to be open to take it in. Because I think a lot of us, when we are researching HSCT, we just want the confirmation that this is going to be helpful. This is my only hope, right? And I can understand that totally I was there myself. But you need to also be aware of what might go wrong. But to give you a, a short summary of what might be the negative results of HSCT and some of the results I see in both the Norwegian and the International Non-Responder Group. The first thing you hope for with HSCT is that it will remove the autoimmune part of your immune system the part where your immune system is eating itself, eating on the myelin around your nervous connections. Some people experience that they get new inflammations, new flare-ups, new plaques on their MRIs. So in that way they can tell that HSCT did not remove the autoimmune part. Some of us, like I did, have had MS for such a long time that we have had enough time to have a lot of old inflammations that have partially repaired themselves over the years. And maybe they are not they don't show up very clearly in your EDS score or your degree of disability before you do the HSCT. My EDS score was 3.5 when I did HSCT in 2012. Now I'm probably around 5-6. This is mostly due to the old damages getting worse. I think of my neural connections like some sort of wiring that has been left unprotected in the storm. It's rusty, it's broken, it doesn't work anymore. And this is a very likely outcome. If you have had MS for a long time, you <laughs> are not as young as you used to be, and you have had old attacks or inflammations that has left scars on your nervous system. And depending on your degree of disability, you might get worse in some of the areas because of this. But wh what I have experienced, and a lot of people like me, we have not had new inflammations, we have not had new functional areas, affected by MS, but we are getting worse on the old damages. They are getting more dominant and 
for my part it's the old inflammations I had in my legs that mainly has caused my legs to be more and more unpredictable and unreliable obvious but there are also several other ways that you may not get the result you want from HSCT. Uh, there are of course a fatality risk it's very low but it is there and some people are experiencing very very harsh side effect both during the treatment with really severe situations occurring during the treatment uh, or late effect damages to the immune system damage to the hormone system a lot of unpredictable and you wouldn't be able to imagine before so the important thing is when you are considering HSCT try to get as much information as possible and be open to take in also the negative experiences because you have to make up your own decision you might probably be in a situation where your doctor or neurologist is not recommending you to do HSCT that means that you have the full responsibility to get as much information as possible about the treatment about the side effect about the possible outcomes but also make an evaluation of where are you and your MS. We know that it works best if you are quite young, have had MS for quite a short time, you have a quite aggressive form of MS. If you, like me, are close to 50 years when you do the treatment, uh, your MS has been <laughs> damaging your body for many years. And you might be in secondary progressive MS or close to secondary progressive uh, and, and you have had a lot of old attacks and you have a lot of scars on your MRIs a lot of old inflammations that have possibly made damage to your system you still might have a very good result but the odds are not that good right and a little thing that I've been thinking about uh, I have been talking to people wanting HSCT, having HSCT, being straight out of hospital, quite euphoric about yes, wonderful, I got my life back. And then a couple of years later, oh, it didn't work like I was hoping it would. But I have also talked to people who are so happy that they did the treatment. But be aware of when people say, that HSCT halts the MS, it stops MS in its tracks. It doesn't. There is no guarantee. If it did that, I would be at 3.5 EDESA score still. But I'm not. I remember one question that I was asked in the beginning before I did HSCT in 2012. And it was, how would you describe success? Will it be just remaining at the level, the EDESA score, the disability level I was at, or would it be improving? And I was like, improving? Of course, I don't want to be this sick forever. I want to be better. <laughs> Sounds familiar? Okay, I'm not better. I didn't even know that it was possible to get into a progressive state and increase disability after HSCT. And some people describe success as being able to lift your own coffee cup or stop peeing yourself afterwards. And if you are quite young and not very disabled, you might think those criteria for success are really scary. So basically, when you're researching HSCT, try to get as much information as possible. Be open to taking taking in also the negative experience so that you can evaluate pros and cons and make up your own mind of how do you think your chances are to get stabilized or even get better and make the best decision for yourself.